All right. So we gave everyone a minute to get in and get connected. Thank you everyone for joining us today for our Wishbook 2023 information session. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Um, ASL interpretation is being provided for today's event. The interpreters will be spotlighted during the session. You can also pin the interpreters by clicking on the three dots that appear in their window and selecting pin from the drop down menu. Captioning is available for today's event. If you would like to enable the caption feed, use the closed caption button at the bottom of the desktop app or in the settings section on mobile devices. Today's presentation is being recorded and will be posted to the foundation's YouTube channel. We will be accepting all questions today via the Q&A feature and addressing them at the end of the presentation. So welcome again. Thank you for joining us on this Friday afternoon. Um, my name is Taryn Lumley. I am a I have brown skin and black hair with currently wearing a striped shirt in front of the Pittsburgh skyline as my background, um, an image that was captured by photographer Dave DeSillo. I am a research coordinator in the Center for Philanthropy here at the Pittsburgh Foundation. I have worked on the Wishbook since 2018. I took over the Wishbook project as project manager in 2020. So about the Wishbook. So the Wishbook is a soft cover printed book that is mailed to the Foundation's donor community every November. It contains 100 requests or wishes of general operating support um, of $5,000. These requests are then fulfilled by the foundation's donor advice fund holders on a rolling basis between November and March. Originally, the wish book started more than 15 years ago as a tool to connect donors to tangible needs in the community. Some of you who have been with this project for a while may remember that we used to ask for specific items such as bicycles or diapers, um, but in 2020, due to the pandemic, we switched over to general operating dollars. Um, we understood that there were a lot of needs and things were moving very quickly at that time, and we wanted to allow that flexibility. So since 2018, the Wishbook has granted out over $2.6 million, with last year's books raising $696,000. So just to kind of get us started and provide a little bit of context, we're going to go over the application timeline. So the wishbook process starts in July. Um, nonprofits are invited to apply. The application opened this year on July 14th. You should have received the announcement or seen the information on our website. Um, and then also in July, we have our webinar where you are at today. So as we go into August, applications will be due at 11.59 p.m. on August 13th. Once we receive your applications, it goes through two rounds of review by a staff here at the Foundation for Eligibility. Once we make all our eligibility determinations, it is then reviewed by our Wishbook Committee, which consists of some of our donors as well as community partners. So in September, this committee meets and they select the final 100 organizations for inclusion. At that point, we notify all the nonprofits of the decision and we begin production on the book. That takes us into October. Production really continues at this point. All of the copy is written, any photos that we need to capture are taken by our team. Our designer begins to put the book into layout. Come November, we do the proofing and the revisions and the layout should all be done. Then it is printed and mailed. Um, the goal is for the book to land with donors and it also is mailed to all of the nonprofits who are included by Thanksgiving. From that point, the grant cycle begins and grants are recommended and paid by our donors on a rolling basis from December through February. In March, the grant period closes, the wish book is complete, and we think about doing it again next year. So the review process. So these are our numbers from last year. Um, typically we get anywhere from about 250 to 300 applications for the wish book. It then goes through the first round of review, which is completed to make sure that the organizations applying are eligible. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the criteria and the preference language later, 
but these first two rounds in particular are primarily focused on the criteria, our hard set rules. So the first round is simply, are you in the region? Did you hit the budget threshold? Um, and things of that nature. Anything that maybe is borderline or we have any questions about goes to a second round of review, which is completed by the vice president of the Center for Philanthropy, as well as one of our program associates. Um, and that's really just to make sure that we are adhering to the rules, but also being fair to anyone who is applying. So through this process last year, we went from 262 applications to 228 and then on to 196. That 196 was reviewed by that committee that I mentioned earlier. And when the committee reviews the application, they're not judging on some kind of inherent worthiness or need. They, at this point, are judging based on clarity and understanding and do they have information to make decisions. So they're looking at, do they understand what it is that your organization does, given the provided information? Um, is it clear what it is that you need? Would they, if they were a donor, have enough information to make a grant decision? Um, not based on their preferences, just focusing on understanding. So after the committee reviews, we have organizations who are approved. So approval for this process is a little bit different from what you may think of for any other grant process that we do here. You may be approved for the wish book, but that does not guarantee funding. It means that your organization has been selected to be in the book. Um, funding decisions are not just made by the foundation, they're made by our donors. So that as a result, these funding decisions are not guaranteed. An organization could not be funded, they could receive partial funding, they could be fully funded, they could also be overfunded, but that is based on um, donor grant recommendations. So, accessing the application. So, as I mentioned, the application opened on July 14th. It is hosted in our grants portal Foundant, which is all online. Um, you can get to it either via the link in the announcement email that you should have received or by going to our website and in the upper menu bar, there's a button that says grantee login that will also take you to found it. So you have to log in to access the application. If you have an existing login, you would simply use that. You can have forgot your password if you can't remember the login. Um, if you do not have one currently, you will need one to create one in order to access the application because applications will only be accepted online. Um, if you have any technical difficulties, you can email our grants manager, Emily Rousseau, and she will assist you. You can also send an email to me. My information will be at the end of the presentation and I'm happy to assist as well. So you're logged in, that'll take you to your applicant dashboard. From the dashboard, you'll hit the button that says apply, which we have highlighted here on the screenshot. That will take you to a list of all the foundation's open applications. From there, you'll scroll until you find Wishbook 2023, and then you'll hit the blue apply button. And from there, you can fill in your answers, you can save it and then return to it later, or you can submit it and that will put it through for review. Applications are due August 13th at 1159 p.m. This is a Sunday. I do not have the expectations that people complete their applications over the weekend. Um, however, if it so happens that people would like to use those extra couple of days, I'm more than happy to let you have that time. There are no exceptions for late applications. The Wishbook production timeline is very tight and we just don't have the wiggle room to accept late applications. So going into the criteria and preference language that I mentioned earlier. First off, what is the difference between the two? So failure to meet criteria will automatically disqualify an organization from inclusion in the book. Preference language is different. Failure to meet preference language does not automatically disqualify a nonprofit. However, organizations that do hit that preference are given priority during the evaluation process. 
So looking at our criteria for this year, you must have a current 501c3 status or a fiscal sponsor who is a 501c3 organization. Um, you may only submit one wish per organization. If you submit multiple applications, they will all be declined. Wishes are for general operating support. When we use general operating support here at the Pittsburgh Foundation, these are what you may think of as unrestricted dollars. This does not mean that you just have to pay light bills. Um, it just means that these dollars are not designated to a specific project and they can be used however you see fit. All wishes are for $5,000. I mentioned earlier, you may be underfunded or overfunded or funded at that 5,000. That does not change that the request itself will go into the book for 5,000. Um, organizations must be located in the region. So we have our list of counties here, including Allegheny, Armstrong, Beaver, Butler, Fayette, Green, Indiana, Mercer, Lawrence, Somerset, Venango, Washington, or Westmoreland counties. Or if you're not in one of those counties, at least 75% of the services you provide should be within those counties. And lastly, you must be a small to mid-sized nonprofit organization, and we're defining that of having an annual budget of $1.5 million or under. So preference. So preference is given to organizations that are aligned with the foundation's five grant making areas as outlined recently in our strategic plan. So this is arts and culture, economic mobility, uh, environmental action, equity and social justice, and basic needs. And again, this is preference language. So if you do not fall into one of those categories, that is okay. That does not automatically disqualify you. We do have a section of the book specifically for those that aren't aligned. Um, additionally, we're looking at organizations that are black and brown led and or black and brown serving. So we define in this case, black and brown as African-American, black, Asian, Asian-American, Pacific Islander, Hispanic, Latino, Latinx, Native American, American Indian, or indigenous. And we also give organizations who weren't in the previous book um, priority as well. And that's just because we wanna make sure that we are opening this process to as many organizations as we can. So I mentioned preference given to organizations aligned with our strategic plan. So these are our foundation directed grant making areas, which we will touch on a little bit more here shortly. Um, but these categories are basic needs. So for basic needs, we're looking at food, shelter, physical and mental health care, child care, education, employment. Um, it's equity and social justice, where we're looking at civic participation and community driven solutions. Um, environmental action. So equitable access to healthy air, water, and land, as well as learning and action. Economic mobility, which includes home ownership, access to post-secondary education, career advancement, and entrepreneurship. And arts and culture. So supporting the careers and lives of individual artists and strengthening small to mid-sized arts organizations. And you can find more on each of these categories on our website under our grant making page. Um, a Additionally, there is a sixth category in the book, and this is for other regional needs. So this includes organizations that maybe don't fall into one of these five categories, or maybe you're just a little bit outside of our usual range, because um, we want to make sure that we're not accidentally excluding anyone through this process. So our question list. These are the questions that you will see when you open up the application. We ask for your mission in 25 words or less, your budget. There are no spreadsheets that you need to upload or anything along those lines. I just need the number. So 1.5 million, 200,000, just the number will suffice. Um, which county are you located in or serve? 
Is your organization black and brown led or does it primarily serve black and brown communities? Into which category does your wish fall? And I will say regarding the categories, this is not hard set. Um, throughout the production process, which category you're filed into may change based on the description of your need or your organization. Additionally, these categories don't have an effect on any other processes here at the foundation. So you may be included into a process, or I mean a category on this end that aligns with one of our grant making processes from our program team. And I'll touch a little bit more about the difference between the two later, but just because you'd be categorized as that in the wish book doesn't necessarily mean that you'd be eligible given the guidelines on that other side. Um, some of those processes as well are invitation only. So I just wanna kind of be clear that this is not an indication of eligibility for any process aside from the wish book. We ask for you to describe your wish. What is it that your organization needs and how does it help the people that you serve? We ask for you to upload a photo, um, the specs for which are in the application. Um, if you are selected for inclusion and the photo fits within the technical requirements as outlined by our designer, we will include that photo in the book, the company your wish. If not, we will send a photographer to capture an image to go in the book. So please don't worry that, oh, I don't have a good image, I shouldn't apply. That is okay. If we need to take one, we will. Um, and then following that, we'll actually send you the images captured by the photographer so that you guys can use them in your publications or as you feel fit. In the event that we do need to send a photographer, we do have questions on here regarding a contact for that photographer. So this would be the person on site to coordinate with them, to let them in the door, to get whichever folks that you need to get on site or the image there. So we ask for a name, an email, a phone number, a mobile number, just that way our team of photographers can get a hold of your organization because they do move pretty quickly once we get started. We ask how long it took you to fill out this application. Um, our goal is to try to keep this short. We think it should take about 30 minutes to an hour, but if I find out it's taking individuals a lot longer than that, then that's a sign for me that I need to go back and fix it. So we just use this to kind of keep track to see how we're doing in terms of the question list itself. Um, we ask if you're using a fiscal sponsor, and if you are, we're looking for their name as well as their EIN number. This way, our grants team can process them a little bit quickly, more uh, a little bit quicker. And then, lastly, payment information. So you have the option for check or ACH, and this will just help direct you to where you need to go based on your decision. So, you fill out your application, you are approved, you're in the book. What do the grants look like? So before we go into wish book specific grants, just a little bit about grant making here at the foundation as a whole. Um, we have two primary categories of grant making. So the first being foundation directed. These are grants that are directed by the foundation and its program department. So this is our traditional grant making process as well as some of our special initiatives such as Small and Mighty or the Social Justice Fund. If you're interested in this type of funding, you can find more information on our website. The other side is donor-directed grant making. So these grants are influenced by advisors on donor funds, such as donor-advised funds. You cannot solicit these funds um, because again, it's donor-directed, so we go based off of their timeline. Because Wishbook is funded through donor advised funds and is a donor directed process, it does not interfere with any foundation directed grant making opportunities. You may have an open grant with our program team and be like, oh, I wish I could apply for Wishbook, but I have this open grant. Wishbook doesn't affect that open grant and that open grant doesn't affect Wishbook, so you can apply for both. So as I mentioned, the vehicle for Wishbook grants are donor advised funds. And grants from these funds are paid on a rolling basis from November until March. Um, this is to say, too, that you may get partial funding. Um, you may get your grant in pieces. So you might get a $200 check and then a $1,000 check. Uh, it really just depends on how these donors recommend grants at any given time. We have lots of different um, fund holders who have different preferences, but in general, 
acknowledgement letters, thank you notes, grant receipts. We do not need those for wish book grants. If someone does request them, we will provide you with the information to send that to them directly. But again, that is at their request. In general, though, we ask that save your time and resources, especially as we know it gets busy at the end of the year and you can just don't worry about sending acknowledgements for wish book grants. And again, just for full transparency, full funding is not guaranteed because these are donor directed funds. Um, just a little story about the individuals to the left on the screen. This is actually a family of our donors, the Bonds, and they come together every year around the holidays. And they, as a family, look through the wish book and decide on grants. And it's how they've gotten the older generations, but as well as the grandchildren and children involved. So that takes us to the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, again, feel free to put them in the Q&A feature. And just, we have a couple of images here from past wish books that were taken by our team of photographers, which as I mentioned, if they do have to come out to your organization, we will provide you with those images at the end for you to use in publication. And then my contact info is here. It's also on the website as well as in the announcement email and on the wish book website on the landing page. So again, any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or if you wanna send me an email separately, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'll check out these questions. All right, first question. Any exceptions to the budget requirement? So, there is not, we maybe have a tiny bit of wiggle room in terms of if your budget's 1.5 million and you're $20 over or $100 over, but we do make it a point to serve small and mid-sized nonprofits, um, particularly because we noticed during the pandemic as well, how often that these organizations were being overlooked or didn't have the means to apply for funding through other major funders. Is the budget a project budget or an organization's annual budget? So we are looking for your annual operating budget. Um, because this is general operating support, we are not looking for specific projects. So there's no need to include a project budget. If applying with a fiscal sponsor, does the general organization information tab within the portal get completed with our organization's detail or the fiscal sponsor's detail? So it would be, the organizational profile would be completed with your information. Um, a key note here is when you're filling out that organizational profile where it asks for the EIN number. Um, I do believe our requirement is that you just put in a, all nines since you're not using your own EIN, and that prompts our grants team to go and reach out to verify the EIN information and the fiscal information. Is it possible to request funds for technology, laptops, iPads to help us with our work? Yes. So because they're general operating dollars, you can use these funds however you see fit. If you want to buy technology, you can buy technology. If you want to buy tangible items, if you want to pay salaries, you're able to do whatever you want with those funds. Um, the only thing that kind of comes into play is donor interest, and that varies wildly every year. Some donors will very resonate with that, other ones will not, but that is just simply kind of the nature of having this large pool of individuals with these wide range of interest of interested. When you say black and brown led, are you talking about the leadership of the organization, for example, the CEO or president? Correct. So we are looking at the executive leadership. Um, also in that vein, where we talk about primarily black and brown serving, we are looking at the 51% threshold of the people that you serve. Can we send more photos if the photo we applied is not the one we want? 
Yeah, so you, what you can do is, is you can forward those to me. Um, my email address again is on the information in the application as well. And what happens is I will send those to our designer who will look at them to make sure that the specifications work out. Um, I would ask that if we have that happen, that you please do that before the application closes, because we do tend to do a review of all the photos just for production reasons. But you can send me a photo if the one that you applied with is not the one that you wanted. So as I understand it, we could receive multiple grants, but I'm sure you control the totals to make sure they do not exceed 5K total. No, you can receive multiple grants. You can receive under 5,000. You could also receive over 5,000. Not that this is a norm, but we have had cases where some organizations have gotten over 10, 15, or 20,000 in the past. We don't limit it in that way. Does wishback participation affect your top page or consideration for other donor-directed grant making? It does not. It is helpful in that we may have information that we can use when talking to donors. But when we say things are donor-directed, we truly mean that they are donor-directed. So our donors come to us with their interest. And then if we have something that lines up, we will share that information. But we don't take things to them unless they ask first generally. Um, so for example, we might have talked to someone who runs a child care center and then later we have a donor who comes to us and they will say, hey, I am interested in child care. Um, who do you have in that range? And when we're doing our research, we make sure to kind of keep our options open, but it may be a case of, hey, we do have this existing information that we may use it, but we don't say, well, this one's in wish books, so they have priority over any other organization. That's not our thought process when connecting donors to nonprofits. When will we be notified of when, if we are chosen to be in the wish book? Um, that would be late September, early October. Um, the committee meets usually in mid-September, so we try to get the decisions out very quickly so we can get started on production, um, but late September, early October. It'd be early October at the latest. Can we ask for a specific program in our organization or does it have to be general operating? Um, you can ask, you can mention programs in your description of the wish. It's not to say that you cannot use these dollars for programs, you can. It's just when you receive the grant, the grant will be for general operating support. We just don't specify that in the actual language. Can you define budget? For example, does 1.5 million budget mean how much revenue we are anticipating? We are typically, for the context of Wishbook, looking at expenses. So are you going to run 1.5 million to actually operate and to put on your programs and pay your staff? For preference given to those not in the previous book, does that mean the most recent book or any previous book? It means the most recent one. So this year, preference will be given to organizations that weren't included in the 2022 wish book. Do we have to submit a photo or can we just select for the photographer to come? So you do have to submit a photo. And we recognize that not everyone has the means to pay for professional photographers and that not everyone has that skill set because you're doing the actual work for your organization. So we just ask that you submit an image. If you don't have one that works at all, that's okay. Just put in a logo or something that lets us know that you need that image to be photographed. Um, 
we try very hard to be considerate of the means because we recognize again that not everyone has the ability to hire someone to come in or the time to do it themselves. So yes, you just have to submit something and then we review it from there. And I'd also like to know, um, piggybacking on this question, that when we send the team of photographers, they're not just gonna come in and do what they want. <laughs> they work with you to make sure that they're capturing an image that does one, capture the work that you're doing, and two, that they're being as respectful of, as possible of you, as well as any clientele that you may have. Um, in the past, we have had organizations that serve very vulnerable populations and very sensitive populations. So for those images, they just had the staff members stand in as opposed to having an actual client. We don't want to put anyone in a position where maybe they were being put at risk or at danger. Other than the five categories you talked about, can you give a little more information regarding preference language? So we really only have three pieces of preference language for the wish book. So that is those five categories that are aligned with our strategic plan, organizations that are black and brown letter serving, and organizations that were not in the previous year's book. Um, as preference language gets applied, it varies from year to year, so I cannot say with any kind of certainty how exactly it will kick in this year because it relies on our committee as well. Um, but what ultimately the goal is, is when we have applications, especially if we're having them in large volume, that if we're looking at two applications that are equal across the board, that if one hits the preference language and one doesn't, the one that hits the preference language will move forward and the one that does not hit the preference language may be declined. And again, that is if they're equal across all other fields. There are other things we take into consideration too, um, particularly when we're looking at our outside counties and such, we wanna make sure that we are being fair in our treatment of them during this review process because we recognize there are vast differences between them. Can we have access to this recording? Yes. Um, this is being recorded. Our goal is to hopefully have it up on the Foundation's YouTube channel next week, pending that nothing goes wrong. We do a school program, but don't track demographic info aside from the number of kids, grades, in school. Does that impact our, impact our preference level? So in this case, you do not track it. We do have an option that is not available or not applicable. And that we'll say in terms of preference that would impact because again, the leaning would be towards organizations that we know are black and brown led and or serving. Our organizational budget is 2.1 million, but our childcare budget is closer to 1 million. Would we apply for childcare? Does that qualify us? So I would have to have a separate call with you about how this budget is structured. We do recognize that some organizations are under an umbrella and maybe don't operate more independently than the actual um, data would show. Um, so we would want to investigate that one a little bit more. I would say if you send me an email that we can have a chat about that one later, just because we want to make sure that it does fall under that threshold. Is it possible to use funds for freelance work to enhance social media or do similar type of work? Yes. Um, again, we say operating, they're unrestricted. So as long as you make a case for it, and I think that's the key piece of this is operating dollars can be used for whatever you want. Um, it's making the case that it is something that a donor would want to support. It's just being compelling in your application. Is there any chance that wishbook pages could be printed in random order, not alphabetically? My leaning on that is no, 
Um, in general, we try to keep it alphabetical just because it's easier for people to reference and follow as they look through the book. I will say we do know that we do have donors who they read that book from cover to cover. They will look at every organization from beginning to end. For preference language, do we have to state that we service black and brown communities inside of the description? It may be helpful, again, if it's making a compelling argument. However, once you check that box, that's all I need in terms of the evaluation process. But again, going back to where I mentioned the committee reviews for clarity, that might be something that is clearer for them to understand. If we were in the 2022 wish book, should we apply again for this year or wait until next? I cannot give you advice on that one. That is entirely up to you um, regarding your timing, your capacity. As I mentioned, it is preference language. It does not automatically knock you out if you were in the previous year's book. Um, occasionally, one we have had organizations that have made it from one book to the next. Um, I will say this is usually due to uniqueness of services or service area. So for example, Prevention Point Pittsburgh is one who's previously been at consecutive books because at the time of their application, there was no one else doing the work that they were doing in the way that they were doing it. So that uniqueness of service really kind of helped in that regard. Can we change our option? I believe we selected the black and brown lead instead of black and brown lead and black and brown serving. Yeah, so if you send me an email, what we can do is I'll push your application back if you need to make any changes, um, so long as it's all done before the deadline. And then what happens is if I push your application back, you have to resubmit it. If you do not resubmit it, it won't be considered. It won't go through the system correctly. So just wanna make sure that we have a conversation beforehand, just that way we can make sure everything gets back in on time. Do you have an idea of how many organizations have been included in the book and have not received any funding? Um, so prior to 2018, I was not employed at the Pittsburgh Foundation. So I'm not 100% sure about what the stats are for those books. I do believe the 20, since 2017, I know as long as I've been here, the books have been completely funded. It is not guaranteed, but we have been very fortunate that, again, I believe 2017, I know, but I'm not sure about the ones before that without asking um, my colleagues. We have not had a book where an organization hasn't been fully funded by the end of it. Um, again, there's no guarantees, but we'd like to continue that trend going forward. What characteristics do previous grantees have in common? I would say when looking at the applications, the key piece is clarity. Um, we have organizations from a very wide range of areas, doing different kinds of work in different locations. Um, that is why when we talk about the evaluation process, any book that makes it, I mean, any wish that makes it to the committee could feasibly be in the wish book. We'd be perfectly okay with that. Um, it's just being clear and descriptive in your application that I think has really helped the organizations who have been included before. Will there be a press release about the orgs that were chosen for this year's book? We have not announced in any kind of press release about the wish book. Um, I would say externally, we do talk about it in context with our donors, it does end up in some of our publications that go out, but it doesn't get a separate release regarding the book. Does board composition count for black and brown lead? Um, it can. If you are primarily black and brown lead in regards to the board, and the board really is that influential role in the day to day, um, yes. Primarily, we tend to look at executive leadership, but board is allowed. With that, I will let you all get back to your day. 
again, you are welcome to send me any questions um, via email. You can call me. Um, I'm happy to talk through any specifics that you have. Um, I'm here Monday through Friday. So feel free to give me a call whenever you're free. And if I'm not here, I'll get back to you.